Farfoy. Uh, Mr Chair, thank you uh, very much for the opportunity to speak at the committee stage of the Smoke Free Environments Amendment Bill. Um, can I commend uh, uh, the Minister in charge of this bill for putting pressure on the Government to push this through? I know there was, uh, on this side of the House, uh, some uh, sense of uh, anguish that, uh, that uh, uh, when we left office in 2008 that these uh, measures uh, were up and ready to go um, and that for two years uh, uh, there seemed to be a lack of action on that. But it seems, uh, with the help of the Minister, some action has been taken. Mr Chair, can I please just um, concentrate on um, clauses 4A and 4B in part one of the bill, which uh, are basically uh, the main parts of this bill, um, uh, banning the, uh, ad advertis uh, the, 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 uh, the advertisement or display of tobacco, uh, tobacco advertising uh, on the interior and exterior of shops. Um, this is uh, all about imagery um, and uh, what uh, the tobacco companies and, and their last bastion of some form of uh, advertising were desperately trying to hold on to. Um, and I know from uh, speaking to one retailer uh, manufacturer in my uh, electorate, uh, Whitakers, who have a big, what they call the golden wall um, in, in, uh, in supermarkets, the importance of that for them. And this, uh, as we kind of uh, put it into a tobacco context, is exactly what uh, the tobacco companies are trying to protect. And, it was, and I stand here with great pleasure saying that they have absolutely failed. Uh, because... Um, as uh, this um, uh, bill went through the House Select Committee, uh, it was one of the first uh, issues that, uh, uh, as, uh, for me as a member of the House Select Committee, that I uh, uh, addressed. Um, uh, the tobacco companies put a big uh, fight up and put uh, a lot of resources, not necessarily uh, through uh, um, themselves, but through other uh, means, uh, through retailers and other organisations, to vehemently oppose uh, what, uh, what uh, we're trying to do today. And we're still getting letters from the tobacco companies saying, that we should reject uh, the, the, the submissions or the, or the thrust of the uh, Health Select Committee uh, to one uh, tobacco manufacturer. You should actually check who the um, members of the Health Select Committee are before you send letters uh, to them, completely bagging a decision uh, that they have made unanimously. Uh, but I look forward to having a meeting with uh, them. As I said, Mr Speaker, um, this is about imagery and uh, making sure we can stamp it out uh, because, Mr Speaker, I attended a uh, Pacific uh, youth, a Health Youth Expo today um, and uh, the, um, I've got a pen from the Pacific Smoking Cessation Programme uh, that is based in Cannons Creek. Um, and they are uh, obviously doing great work to stop the kind of uh, 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 and uh, decrease the amount of young people who are smoking at the moment. And uh, this, in, in, in some a huge way, will, will make a huge impact uh, by making sure that these walls of tobacco are no longer uh, in, in, in our shops and, and, and in our set service stations. Mr Speaker, with 700,000 Kiwis smoking at the moment and 5,000 Kiwis dying each year uh, of uh, tobacco-related illnesses, uh, this is um, one of uh, the most positive things that this House uh, could do at the moment uh, to make sure we clamp down on that. And as I mentioned earlier, um, uh, we, there was uh, some vehement uh, opposition to, uh, to this from the smoking industry and uh, uh, through some other agencies that I fear uh, were funded uh, by uh, the uh, tobacco industry. And um, as I look at Clause 4A, uh, where the House Select, Select Committee um, made an amendment to the uh, transitional exemption from compliance periods uh, from two years down to 12 months. I'd like to congratulate all those uh, anti-health um, smoking uh, organisations that made submissions uh, to the Council uh, who were vehemently uh, opposed to uh, uh, the tobacco industry and the retailers having a two-year period uh, to make sure they could, com they could comply uh, with, um, with, the, uh, with the nuts and bolts of, uh, of this um, uh, part of the bill. Um, we also made a concession uh, in, uh, I think, in the commencement of this bill. Uh, we uh, um, moved that uh, while we start a bit later, uh, that uh, the, uh, the, 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 the law itself was all inclusive sooner. So we moved uh, that uh, from away from the two-year period into the 12-month transition. Uh, so, Mr. Speaker, it's, it's an absolute pleasure, uh, Mr. Chair. Sorry, it's an absolute pleasure to be uh, speaking here today uh, to a bill that prohibits the display of tobacco in our, 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 um, in our shops and, uh, and in our service stations. Um, as I said, um, it was an interesting experience having listening uh, to some of uh, the tobacco industry submissions to this bill. Um, it's clear that uh, with a huge weight of uh, money and resource uh, that, that they had, they uh, put up a, a huge fight. Um, and, but I think uh, in the end. Uh, common sense won out and uh, the efforts and uh, the passion 
of the uh, organisations such as ASH uh, won out in the day, and I think that was a positive thing. Paul